Hi everybody, uh, this will be part four of a Maya to Unreal environment tutorial series. Last video we talked about how to import uh, the static meshes as far as the model uh, that has the geometry and the material as well as the texture maps into Unreal. So we set up a mod props uh, folder. Underneath that we have our materials folder, meshes, and textures. So if we go to our meshes folder, what we're going to do this video is talk about how to make adjustments to the static mesh, uh, apply the textures to the materials, and scale things up. So if I look at that mod props combined export, this is going to be, if I double click on that, this is going to open this up in the static mesh editor. So from the content browser in the meshes folder, I'm going to double click on that mod props combined export. And this will show me what my uh, static mesh looks like. So we imported this as one full mesh. Okay. We have all of our different materials set up. So all we have to do is just go assign our textures to those materials um, and uh, then drag it into the scene. So uh, if I close that and open up my sidewalk straight static mesh, this is my sidewalk straight geometry piece. Looks like a cube right now, flattened cube. Um, here is my wall half thick border. So these do not have materials assigned to them. So what we're going to do is if I go to each one of these sidewalk straight and the material uh, in my static mesh editor up at the top says material slot. I'm going to click on this drop down and add that sidewalk material to it. Sidewalk mat. There we go. Okay, let's do save. So that saves that asset with that material. Let's go to the street base static mesh, double click on that, and we'll find, I think I called this one street plane. There we go. Uh, make sure that's loading and click save. And then we'll do the same thing for these other two. Uh, this is a wall half thick border. Wall, wall with trim. Yep, that's what that one called that one. There we go. And then wall window. So I'm just applying the material that I created from the combine, combined one, wall window. There we go. All right. Textures are still not loading, but if you have individual objects, you want to make sure that those objects have materials associated with them. So let's uh, let's drag the combined object of my entire environment into my world and see the scale. So if you remember, we scaled this up um, to uh, an increase of 10 in Maya, and that's going to be a good base, but I'm going to have to scale this up more. Um, just a little bit. So if I drag this into my scene, uh, there's the rough size of my environment. Okay, if I hit play, take a look at this. Well, it's, it's a little small. Okay, um, so this trash can is a little small. My doorway is a little small. Um, so uh, that kind of dark purple, uh, this one right here, that's my door height. So my character is just too big. Okay. Uh, so on average, it's a 10, in, 10 times increase, but I will need to make my adjustment here a little bit. Uh, I'm going to go to scale. Uh, as I drag it into the scene, I'm not going to make my adjustment in the static mesh editor, but as I drag it in my scene, in the world outline, it needs to be selected, and I'm going to increase the 1.75, 1.75, and 1.75 in all three axes. All right. Um, so that for my project is going to work well for my rough scale. That's the size that I want it to be, about 1.75. So it is going to be larger than a 10 times increase. It's probably going to be 12, uh, maybe 13 from the default Maya size. But that's my rough size uh, that I want there. So you may need to go as you drag it into Unreal and then increase your scale in X, Y, and Z uh, even more to match the scale of your playable character, whatever it is there. All right, um, so also let's drag in uh, my individual objects over here. Uh, there's my sidewalk straight. I'm just gonna use these as kind of defaults to show you uh, examples here. Uh, here's my half wall, and there's my window. Okay, so those are all so small as well. So we're gonna do 1.75 for each one of these. If I can do it with all three at the same time, you know, 1.75. There we go. Move them apart a little more. 
All right, so now if I play my big environment, combined environment, those all scaled properly. And then here are my individual parts. Okay, so that's the right door size that I want, I want there. Maybe a little larger, but it's pretty good for a default. Okay, so what you will notice is uh, the individual assets already have collisions on them. Okay, uh, so that way as I go up onto that platform, it'll stand on that. Okay. So the individual pieces already have collisions on them. If I go to the player or to the combined asset, there's actually a collision on this as well. I can't walk on my environment because it's one big cubic collision. Uh, so that's where I need to go back and make adjustments to that. Um, so if I go back out, hit escape of the play mode, and double click on that mod props combined uh, mesh, if you combine everything together, you will need to go into Unreal and change the collisions if you want the player to move around on this environment. Um, you may not need to move around, you may just want to visualize it in Unreal, but if you want it to collide properly uh, in the static mesh editor of this object, if I go to collision and simple collision, there's the collision for this object that's automatically generated. Okay. It's not perfect, uh, especially for our needs, so we don't need that one. Um, so what we can do is remove this collision. The collision is just a bounding box that tells the player what to collide with and what not to collide with. If I come in here and take this collision, which is that green wireframe, and delete that. If I hit save now and go down and hit play again, now there's no collision. So now the player will walk directly through that. So that's also not what I want. Um, but I want to create some simple collisions. Now we can spend a bunch of time making a precise collision for everything. Um, but when you import a combined version of your scene, you will have to go in and make collisions if you want the player to collide properly. So one thing we can do is in that static mesh editor for this combined object is go to collision and add a box simplified, simplified collision. So this will put a box wireframe that the player can or cannot collide with. So the first one we want is just a very small one. I want it to be that small. Um, and this is a good point to talk about the snap tools. So there is movement snaps. If I get my move tool, that will snap to, right now is default every 10 units, which is a good distance away. If I change that down to one, it'll snap closer, so not, farther, not as far apart. Uh, we also have rotate snap, so angle snap, which will as default snap to 10 degrees. Okay, uh, you can change that as well, 5, 30, whatever you might want. I don't need to rotate this for now. And then there is scale snaps. So right now it's set to 0 0.25. I don't know what yours might be set as default. Uh, but if I put that down lower, 0 0.03125, that will allow me to be able to um, uh, to scale it a little bit more uh, accurately. So with the static mesh editor, there's still a little bit of qualms with it, but now I can scale this down and say, let's move this down as well. And what I really want this for is to um, collide with this bottom ground surface. If I wanted to be specific here, I can move these in. Slowly do some scaling. Too much. There you go. That'll work for now. So that way, this bounding box is just the size that I need it to be there. Select it again. This is kind of tedious sometimes. All right. To copy an object in general, uh, I can hold down the Alt key and with the arrow key move it over. So I just made a copy of my box collision. So the original one's still there, but this is a copy. Um, I want to move this over here to the sidewalk area. Uh, let's move it up, scale it up a little. Oh, that's too much. Let's see if I can just move it up. If we can get a little closer here. Okay, our movement is good. There we go, that's a good position. Uh, but then we need to scale it out a little. And 
we'll try that. It's good enough for now. There you go. All right. Um, so the last one, we're going to make another copy of this and for the main building. Um, and I'll come back and I'll show you my finalized version. This does take a little time to kind of get set up. Um, so I'm going to make, uh, hold down Alt and click and drag and make another copy of my collision. And I'll scale this up. So that way it's roughly the size of the building. We'll move it over. So collisions are necessary if you want the player to interact with that. It's not necessary if we're just using this for a viewing standpoint. Okay, that looks pretty good, pretty close. So we can move it over here. Okay, and let's scale it this way. Hard to see it right now. Up here for a second. There we go. So now we should be able to see it as we're scaling. Oh, we're scaling too much. Okay, that'll be good for now. Okay, pretty good. Uh, then let's just move it back. This way a little more. All right. All right. So let's save. And technically, I would come back and add more collisions for this. I'll open up a later save one later. Uh, save and close that. Now, if I come and hit play, now I have some collisions that are a little bit more accurate. It'll step up to that. It won't collide within that wall. So we can add some simple box collisions to things so that the player will collide with what we want them to. Now there's no collision on uh, the pole, there's no collision here, so I'll open up my other file later and show you some refined collisions. But it is good to go ahead and uh, open up the static mesh editor, make sure the materials are set up properly, and then to start creating some, um, some collisions as you need to. Uh, individual assets like some of these um, that I've imported individually will already have collisions so if I look at the simple collision there it went ahead and created a pretty good box collision for me there you go it is not going to follow the geometry perfectly but it's pretty good so each one of these already has I'll double click on my window here a simple collision for that as well you can also delete that and change that as well uh, but individual aspects, you're actually going to do less adjustments to the collisions. Uh, overall, combined scenes, you're going to have to do more smaller collisions for those. All right, so uh, this video, we didn't get to the textures. We'll do that in the next video. But we talked about how to make adjustments to the static mesh and the static mesh editor, how to drop it into our world, increase the scale as we need to with the scale values. Um, uh, make some fun uh, small adjustments to collisions so next video we'll come back and load the textures in here uh, so that way we can start seeing our final textures on our world